So we continue in the fourth letter. This letter, as we've mentioned, is about charity, it's tzedakah. And we spoke about the limits to charity. Like every mitzvah has its limits, so tzedakah also has minimum 10%, up to 20% of your net earnings to be given to tzedakah, to charity. And as the author explains in this letter, that's good for a person who doesn't have any gaping holes in their soul, who doesn't have anything they need to fix in their life, which is not too many of us. <laughs> but if we have things that uh, have led us astray, and we have the light of a mitzvah that we didn't fulfill and bring that into our lives and into the world, so there's a hole, there's a vacuum, there's something lacking. And we can make it up though. We could make that up, it's called tshuva, it's called return. It's return to Hashem in a manner that you actually make up what you were lacking previously. You know, tshuva for most people would probably mean that you, you know, from here onwards, okay, we'll move forward from this point, but the past is a different thing. And even if you're going to forget the past, here it's much more profound. It's not merely that God's forgetting the past. He's actually filling the past, what was lacking, the vacuum that we created by going astray, not doing in the, what Hashem needs from us. And we therefore create that vacuum. We can actually fill that vacuum. Which that is actually pretty awesome, that in itself. And that's the essence of tshuva, actually. Ikra tshuva. And where is that? Is in the heart. In other words, we have to dig and find a very deep place in the heart. Um, first of all, for regret for anything that we had done. Um, but regret is not s sufficient because now we have to do something proactive to bring something into our lives, um, a light of Hashem, a light that was lacking previously. And we want to bring that. And in order to bring that, though, a limitless kind of light, not a limited light, because a limited light, you know, you could say is from here henceforward, but a limitless light is limitation, meaning it doesn't have a limitation of time or space. So it can be effective in our lives um, for filling the gaps, the vacuums that we've created. But we need to arouse that light of God, that infinite light of God, in order that that should actually be imbued and brought into this world, elicited from on high. Now, of course, the first thing is, you know, the regret for what we did wrong, but then that's not sufficient. That's going out of a bad place. But now you need to go into a good space. And that space is what we call Rav Chesed. It's an infinite abundance of kindness that we display. And the word, actually, Chesed is interesting. It comes from the word Chas, or uh, doesn't necessarily come from the word, but at least alludes to the word Chas Dalin, that we have pity on those who have who are have nots those who have nots he who has not right and you give and you give them how do you give them without measure without limit what does that mean to give without limit i mean you give everything you know you know rabbi Fon's going to come to you and say our institution needs for where we're down and out and we need um you know to help this and this and that you have to give everything is that what it means? How does it mean limitless? So, uh, perhaps we can understand limitless means base, usual giving is based on what I'm ready to give, what I am comfortable to give, and maybe I'll even go beyond that and give more than that. I'll give what, okay, I'll give what God says to give 10%, even 20%, right? But I'm giving based on the law. So there's a, a limitation. Okay, up to 20%, nothing more. I'm not going to give more in this situation or to this person or to this whatever need. Rav Chesed, abundant giving, means that you're not giving based on you or based on any limitation. You're giving on the, based on the needs of the individual. Now, there's whatever you need, I'm there for you. 
that's limitless because it's kind of open-ended. Um, now, obviously, within whatever you're capable in, we're not talking about go, you know, you're going to do anything foolish and, uh, in the sense um, to, you know, give whatever your needs are. Um, in other words, I'd even give beyond 20% if that's what your needs are. Yeah, I just want to put uh, a parenthesis um, in this comment over here and what the altar is speaking about, just to put it into context of today. Today, if you see a, a person who is in, in need, so, you know, the scriptural, the biblical law, so it's speaking about the individual and what their uh, obligation is as an individual. So therefore, yes, up to 20%. And if you're going to want to fix something of the past, so you're going to uh, incorporate Rav Chesed in abundant giving that is without limitation beyond that 20%. So today we need to understand that we live in the communities and there are community organizations who have a responsibility to take the need, take care of the needs, the, the physical needs, the spiritual needs of people. And that's why we give to organizations that help though in those, uh, in those needs. So it, it doesn't mean necessarily that your neighbor, this is what they need to get their act together and therefore you have that obligation in a halachic um, circumstance of today. The Alter Rebbe is speaking about a mindset, he's speaking about an attitude about what it means though to give, to give abundantly, to give without measure, right, without giving not what I'm, not only what I'm not comfort, what I'm beyond my comfort zone, but giving not based on me, but based on the needs. What the needs are, that's what you give. That's called abundant giving. Um, when we do that, we elicit from on high, from God Almighty, also a a light, a heavenly light that is infused in us and in the world that fills gaps, very big gaps in our lives <laughs> as a result. Now, a person, the Elder Rebbe says, might say, well, you know, how can I give in such a manner? Um, so the alternative explains, see, we, we are physical people and therefore we're very attuned to our physical needs. And when we have a physical need, especially if we're not feeling well, uh, especially if there's some, you know, healing that we need, what are we ready to do? We're ready to give anything and everything of our funds, in other words, to the last dollar, if through this process of healing, I will be okay and I will live. So we will do that for our physical well-being, right? So now that it says, it shouldn't be any less our spiritual needs, not just our physical needs, but our spiritual needs, that when we have um, uh, healing that's necessary for our spirit, for our neshama, because of, you know, going off in a, a off, off the way of Hashem, what Hashem wants and needs from us, we should not... Um, limit it. We wouldn't limit it for our physical well-being, so we shouldn't limit it for our spiritual well-being either. Money is of no matter when it comes to our well-being, so it shouldn't be of no, it should be of no matter likewise when it comes to the soul. And therefore, having this attitude of Rav Chesed, of a, an abundance of giving, abundant, uh, limitless giving, and as we explained, limitless means not based on me, but based on the need giving. Um, this will cause that we bring a light of Hashem into our lives. That's that's with the tshuva, that kind of um, attitude and that kind of giving of ourselves is um, rectifies and all the things that we need to rectify. Very powerful, very powerful idea. Um, you know, there's no doubt that giving is associated with, you know, you're the giver and the recipient is, you know, is the, re is the receiver. So you're in a, in a more esteemed place because, you know, who, who wants to be on the recipient's end? Uh, actually, a point here, I forgot that it's, uh, ultimately we're all recipients from God. We're all um, destitute and have nothing. Because anything and everything that we have is only 
that God gives and animates and gives it to us and the reality of its actual existence. So we're all receivers. And here it goes a step further, the Altered Ebbe is saying. Usually when we give charity and when we give it in this limited fashion, so then it's based on me and based on the law right, of what I am obliged. But when it's based on um, abundant giving without the limitation, right, so it means it can go beyond the 20%. Um, you know what that means? Um, I'm actually the recipient. I'm, I, I, I'm giving them money, but the person's getting so much more in return. This is what the Altered Ebbe is telling us over here. Usually we feel that, you know, we feel good about ourselves when we gave, you know, especially if you gave a, a nice large amount, right, more than you are comfortable to give. It's a feeling of good, you know. You've bestowed kindness. Uh, that is the limited form of kindness, but the infinite form of kindness is actually the kindness is bestowed upon us that here's an opportunity that um, we can fill in the gaps we can fill in the vacuum that we have created by straying from what God wants and needs from us and we didn't fulfill it by giving us an opportunity that we can do something that is awesome so we become actually a greater recipient than we are the actual the one who's the be, uh, the the benefit uh, the the beneficent of doing the kind act. Uh, interesting thought um, to ponder. Okay, do you have any questions? Any comments? Any thoughts? Oh, we welcome Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Good to see you back. Welcome. Any questions? I don't see any questions. I guess we got clarity. <laughs> I guess we got clarity. Okay, folks, I have to. Uh, we actually, as I mentioned uh, today, we finish off our campaign for Chabad Lifeline for our drug crisis in, um, center, helping people with addiction and mental health. So we are doing a matching crowdfunding campaign. Charity.com forward slash Lifeline. Uh, take a look. All right. Um, Wendy has a question. John, uh, the need for giving seems greater today than ever before. How do we differentiate among those to whom we give charity? Oh, very good, John. Yes, the needs are greater today than ever before. Uh, how do you make a distinction? So um, in Jewish law, we have to take care of our loved ones first. That is something we learned in the previous letter, letter number nine. Um, and then our community, our local community, and then our community beyond. Um, so there is a hierarchy in, in the needs category that we have a responsibility. Yes. Okay, beautiful. Lori, if we're going through a financial hardship, but not in dire need, how do we give? How do we receive assistance when so many others are in worse situations? Yeah. So, you know, just to give the context over here, the author of this speaking 200 plus years ago to Hasidim, who were living in Russia at the time, you know, what we have, we're like kings compared to back then. Now, no doubt everything is in a context and what people are accustomed and used to. No doubt about that. Um, but he was very um, uh, strong in his words that, you know, to give even when you don't have. What does that mean for us today? Um, well, we're learning these things from the Alter Rebbe, how we deal with it. Um, you know, each person needs to make the calculation and figure it out, what it is. 
um, that they're capable of giving, or what they're, they're ready to give, and then I would suggest go a little above that. And if someone is has the has the chutzpah, the audacity to test God, give ten percent and see if God is going to come back and take care of you even more. So um, that's ten percent of net earnings, not of um, of earnings, not of uh, um, income, right? The government takes it, and you don't give on that. But that's a very good question, and you know, El Tareb is inspiring us how we take the inspiration and what we do with that. Uh, that's something we can deal with in TRC on, th on Thursday when we have question and answer. It's actually a good topic amongst other things, uh, Laurie, so uh, maybe we can deal with it further there. I think the important thing that we need to take away from everything we're doing here the al is trying to change the way we perceive ourselves, the way we perceive the world, the way we even perceive God. And when we start looking at the world and looking at ourselves differently, what's going to happen? Our heads open up much more readily. Our hearts are much more attuned as a result. So that's what the Alter Rebbe is trying to do with us, is that when we in incorporate this and we think about it and we try to, you know, incorporate the truth of the teachings first in my mind, and then try to, you know, act upon it. So what happens is we perceive ourselves differently. We look at money differently. I I, I must say for myself, that's you know, something that has definitely. You know, I looked at money the way I was raised. And um, by learning Tanya, I look at money, especially what we're doing in, in, in TRC, I look at money differently. So, you know, more of that to come. A very good question. So that's what the Alter Rebbe wants to do. He wants, we're Chabad. Chabad means Chok Rabin Das to give us a, a new outlook, a new perspective on our lives, the world, God's presence in the world, our possessions, including money, and everything in it, in between. Hi, Rabbi Ronnie Ta Fine, coming to you. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I see here. We've got a Michelle, please share with us. And Michael, I didn't notice. Michelle, welcome back. Rabbi, Rabbi, I just wanted to say hello. It's been a very long time. Um, I'm actually in Eretz Yisrael at the moment. Oh, I'm here beautiful. For, yeah, I'm staying here for half the year. And, you know, just being here, I feel... As soon as I touch down, I feel like I'm more spiritual. Something happens inside me. Absolutely. The I air is different. The air, oh the air is God, different. The air is, it really is. Um, I am staying in Tel Aviv. I'm not in Jerusalem, but I've been to Jerusalem already, of course. And um, I, I just wanted to say it's an honor to hear you today um, while I'm here. In the All right. Holy Land. All right, thank you for joining. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Welcome back, Michael. Um, when uh, when somebody start, starts as a somebody business and um, he doesn't have uh, m m the money for giving tzedakah or having the time. Uh, to to study as much as he wants, you know, it's like he doesn't put Hashem first, but he does it for a reason that he can establish himself and uh, get uh, earn, earn money const continuously. And um, when uh, when he established himself, and I and then decides I give more back than I have to because all this time. 
I didn't give, give enough, is this then uh, okay? That, uh, no, I'm not here like to... I'm not here to give okays and not okays, you know, uh, on what people do. That's not my uh, my job. <laughs> Is it okay? That's not, you know, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not for, uh, in a public setting like this, in uh, where we're learning together to, you know, uh, I, every situation is different. Every person is different. So, you know, uh, I can't make a judgment, make a blanket statement. I can make a blanket statement of that which uh, we know that is, uh, you know, giving 10%, uh, you know, uh, that can be a blanket statement. Uh, someone has the difficulty? Okay, so listen, in all things, we are working on ourselves. That's why we're BITs, Bain and Ian training. We are working to become what we need to become. All right, folks. Uh, I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zichan Kedeshim. We want you all can over. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time you have. Wonderful, amazing day. Thank you for joining.